Good morning, and welcome back to Margin. This morning, we're going to talk about the five steps to avoid getting into student loan debt. This is part one of a two-part series, so let's jump right into it. So as a student, I remember how difficult it was to balance whether to work and work multiple jobs or whether to go to school full time and really focus on that. And I ended up doing both. I ended up working multiple jobs throughout all of college. And, uh, and with that, I wanna break down some components that I utilized and those that I've seen people since utilize that have been really effective in avoiding getting into student loan debt. So education data outlined that, uh, that student loan debt is growing six times faster than the US economy. Let that sink in. And they went into this further and said that 45.3 million student borrowers are in debt by an average of $37,691 each. And so with that, when they looked into the data further, they basically said that 42.9 million Americans with federal student loan debt each owe an average of $36,510 for their federal loans. Uh, but when they looked into it further, they found that 2.4 million borrowers owe an average of $57,083 each in private loans. And so with that, when you're looking at this culmination, you're looking at this combination of student loan debt, uh, people are in a world of a hurt when it comes to how much student loan debt that they have taken on. Now, that's what I want to go into today is figuring out, okay, we know what the stats are. We know what the stats tell us. Uh, and with that, how do we prevent that? You know, we may not be able to wind back time and, uh, and do things differently, but how if we are in school now or if we're going into school or we are planning our college career, how do we prevent uh, you know, our kids going into student loan debt? or if we are in student loan debt ourselves, not getting into any more than we have to. So if you are in student loan debt, you probably know that there's a student loan suspension that's effective until September 30th of 2021, as of right now. So that covers uh, you know, both principal and interest, and as of right now, gives people a little bit more money in their pocket that they would normally pay on their student loans until that expires. But with that, I wanted to look into the default rates. And so I found an article by uh, Education Data again, and they looked at uh, how many um, you know, student loans actually default. And, and with that, they said an average of 15% of student loans are in default at any given time. 11% of student loan holders default within their first year of graduation. So that's one in 10 people uh, walking around with student loan debts uh, that that default within the first year. And I wouldn't be surprised, especially in a time where there's a suspension, that people will think, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind, and they'll forget to, to start up their payments again and get those reoccurring payments going. And I wouldn't be surprised if we are seeing even more default uh, in, the, um, in the near future um, on these student loans, especially in light of some of the um, some of the some of the aspects of uh, forgiveness and and some of the legislation moves that uh, that are being proposed. So in the episode on the twelve steps to debt payoff, I put student loans at number eight. And when I was looking into uh, the current rates for student loans, I found an article from Nerd Wallet. Nerd Wallet basically outlined. Uh, that the average student loan ranges from 2.75% to about 14.5%. And so with that, when you're looking at that massive range, it will calibrate, it will, it will adjust within your debt payoff based on that interest rate. So based on this range, let's take an average of about 4% for a new student loan. And if you were looking at that balance of $36,510 as an average balance, and you have an average payment on a monthly basis of about $370, you are looking at paying about 120 of that per month in interest alone. And so when you are having that compound effect, you are having that interest compounding against you, and you are just paying the minimum payment for that student loan, 
it is significantly impacting your financial picture. And that's why it's important to figure out, okay, first and foremost, what types of loans do I have? Do I have unsubsidized or subsidized? Am I paying the interest uh, from the, si the time that I sign the loan or is someone else carrying that interest until I graduate? And then, uh, and then from that point, looking at, okay, what is this gonna cost me over the lifetime of the loan? Now, if you wanna look at other options, there are many out there. It's just a matter of actually wanting to spend the time to figure out some solutions. So if you are determined to pay your way through school, to work multiple jobs and balance uh, work and school, which I would advise that you do to some extent, if you are determined to do that, you will want to figure out what to do with those that savings. And first and foremost, if you don't have a rainy day fund, if you don't have an emergency fund, my encouragement to you would be to save that up first, to put away that money first and foremost for the purpose of uh, a rainy day fund and, and having that in place so that you can put your income otherwise, whether it's from uh, multiple jobs, a side hustle or something else, uh, you can put that directly to your expenses for school without going into debt. So you're probably asking, how do I save uh, effectively for college? And what I would encourage you to do first and foremost is as you are working those multiple jobs or that side hustle or figuring out some means of income that uh, that is manageable with your school schedule, it will be important for you to set aside a certain amount for a rainy day fund. And so I recommend that uh, those go in four steps. The first step comes down to saving $500. The second step comes down to saving $1,000. The third step comes down to saving $3,500. And then I broke it down into saving uh, for uh, your expenses uh, of your living expenses uh, up to six months. And so with that, of course, if you're in college, you'll probably have the first or second step uh, established, but you may not establish step three or four as of yet. Um, so with that, you'll want to have some kind of rainy day fund in place to cover uh, the the costs uh, associated to an appliance going out or getting a flat tire or something like that. And you'll want to figure out a way to get that into savings and then be able to use anything above and beyond that towards uh, you know, tuition, uh, you know, room and board and, uh, and you know, the other aspects that are costs, uh, related to school. So you're probably asking, okay, if I want to, um, make an income during school and I want to pay my way through school, I want to, uh, be able to, uh, you know, get an emergency fund into place. I want to be able to pay for, uh, tuition, room, board, and the other expenses that come up along the way. How do I do so? And oftentimes I recommend that people not only have just a, uh, a job that you wait tables, even though I think everyone should do that at some point or another, uh, but also have the ability to have a side hustle. Now, I know that that is widely overused, uh, but it's important to have a side hustle. It's important to have something that is also uh, contributing to you staying out of debt as a student. And so with that, that may come down to you renting your car out on Turo and, and making an income off that. It may be you driving Uber, uh, you know, for Uber and, uh, and, and doing that on, you know, times that you're, you're, you're not in class, or you may look at, um, house hacking and purchasing a home and, uh, and renting out some of the bedrooms so that you're house hacking. But you can look at so many different opportunities, so many different options when it comes to getting some kind of side hustle. But it can be easy to just settle and, and sign on the dotted line for those student loans rather than getting that extra job, rather than cutting down your expenses and, um, and going to that affordable school. But your future self will thank you. If this information is helpful to you, explore the Margin Membership, where me and my team will help you take the information you're learning and apply it to your life and your finances. I've built an interactive course that allows me and my team to come alongside people like you to help you revamp your finances and build margin into your life. Click the link in the description below for more information.